Hey, everybody, and welcome to Learning from Smart People. I am your host, Rob Oliver, and I appreciate you being with me today. My guest today is Michelle Teague. She is someone that I met through the National Speakers Association here in Pittsburgh. And on top of being a fantastic person, she is also smart. And um, I have her on here today to talk about communication. And I mean, just my understanding of it is this way, you know, having good, having a good understanding of other people's communication preferences can go a long way in getting our message across using a tool such as the disc um, to understand someone's communication preferences will help you to better communicate your message so they can receive it and understand it. Uh, Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Rob, and thank you for inviting me onto your show. Oh, you bet. So let me just kind of start this way. Tell me like your backstory. How did you get to where you are today and doing which your business name, I absolutely love, a Teague of your own. I'm a dad. I make dad jokes. I Puns are wonderful. How did you get to where you are today? Sure. I was a... First, I taught in academia for about 11, 12 years or so. Um, I taught accounting. I taught management classes, um, organizational behavior, fun stuff like that. I then went into corporate America and was a corporate trainer for many, many years and uh, worked in both senior living and in healthcare. Uh, provided training uh, for leadership roles in business applications, also did, you know, some OSHA and HIPAA type of training, fun stuff like that. And one of the things that I noticed, every single company that I worked for, every um, place that, that I was, what I found was they would promote these great people. They would promote people who did a fabulous job at their job and then once they got promoted those people weren't so fabulous anymore they they didn't quite uh, do very well they, they they would flounder in the new position that they were in and these companies would always wonder why why aren't they doing well and it's because what got them there isn't going to keep them there and get them to the next level. Uh, those companies never bothered to provide them with leadership training. And um, I would see this over and over again. Uh, I went out after leaving corporate America. I was a contract trainer. And I would go and literally do public and private uh trainings for organizations and I would see it over and over again there too. And so that's when I knew I need to help these organizations and more importantly, I need to help those leaders because they're not getting the support they need. They don't have the skills they need to be successful in their careers and uh, later on down the road in life. And so that's when I started to provide leadership development training and communication skills training, because what I found was there was a lot of conflict going on because people weren't able to communicate with each other. There was this lack of communication and this lack of awareness of how people communicate differently with each other. And so that's how my company started was I wanted to kind of fill this gap there that had been left in corporate America and even in small businesses where people weren't getting the development they needed to be a leader and companies weren't paying attention to the communication styles and conflict was ensuing. Okay. So let me just kind of rehash or recap what, I just heard you say, um, and I'll, for example, you have someone who is a, a wonderful salesperson mm -hmm. and you promote them and you make them a sales manager. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it makes logical sense, except that they are two very different skill sets. Yes. And yes, they are. It, is that, is that a proper understanding of what you were seeing when you were out there? 
Yes, it is. And when that's a perfect example, because as a salesperson, you're looking out for your own good. You're, you're out there, you're trying to make as many sales as you can. You are going after as many customers as you can. You don't pay a bit of attention to the other people on your team because you just want to go, 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 and you want to get to every single customer yourself. You get promoted. Yay, because you did such a great job. And now all of a sudden, you've got to figure out how to communicate with these people and get them all to work together. Uh, and that's a completely different skill set than what you had before. Okay. And you mentioned two concepts. You mentioned communication and leadership. Are, and let me just, for my own understanding, are those two different things? Are they the same thing or how, how does that, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, everybody communicates. Uh, when, when it comes to leadership, communication is a huge skill to have as a leader. You need to be able to communicate your message. You need to be able to communicate with the people who you are leading. You also need to be able to communicate with other leaders and um, come together and make sure everybody's on the same page. So good communication skills are vital to being a good leader. You don't necessarily have to be a leader, though, to need good communication skills. Uh, everybody can benefit from improving their communication skills. And when you're talking about communication skills, are you talking just about expressive communication or receptive communication? Is it both? Uh, what are your thoughts there? It's both. And that's one of the ways that you can, uh, I'm not going to say eliminate, but that you can reduce the amount of conflict that goes on within an organization and even within your own personal relationships is not only the, the message that you're sending, but how you're receiving other people's messages by being aware of what it is that they're trying to tell you and how they're trying to tell you. Because people communicate in different ways. And that's one of the things that I found is not everybody communicates the exact same way. Yep. So how do we, and I guess this is what you work with, how do we open our mind to the fact that just because we said it doesn't mean that it's heard or, and it may be the way we said it, it may be what we said, it may be who, like, how do we, how do you help folks to, to move past that thing that said, well, well, I told them, right. Um, to actually, um, I communicated the message to them. D does that make sense at all? Yes, it does. And first and foremost, if any of you have children, you know exactly what Rob is saying right there. Um, because if you have children, then you know, you can tell them till you're blue in the face that they need to empty out the dishwasher. And it doesn't happen. Um, how do you know <laughs> that they have gotten the message? Uh, so there's a, a couple different things that you can do. First and foremost, you can ask them, hey, uh, I, I would really appreciate it if you would empty out the dishwasher before I begin starting to cook for dinner. And, and when they say, okay, okay, ask them. All right, so what is it that I just asked you to do? And basically what you're trying to do is get them to repeat back what you just asked them to do. So that way you know, all right, they got the message. Now, uh, on the next level, uh, something that's going to be a little bit more complicated maybe than emptying a dishwasher, if you've got something uh, business-related where there's going to be several steps involved, you could actually ask them, well, how do you see yourself starting that project? What is it that you think you need? What's your first step going to be? Um, are you going to need any help to do that? So that way you know they're starting to internalize what it is that you're asking them to do, and they're actually going through the different steps involved in completing this particular task or completing this request. And they're thinking, oh, hold on a second. Um, what is it that I do need to do? And am I going to be able to do this? And do I need any help in involved in this? Once you get them to start thinking about that, you realize that they understand exactly what it is that you're asking for. And now you start to open up a dialogue between the two of you and better understanding what it is that you need. Okay. 
and work with me on this again, because you're, you're talking about communication. You're talking about asking them to, you know, formulate what are the steps you're going to have to do? Are you going to need help? And so on. And that sounds very much like it, you're not telling them what to do. You're getting them to think through it. And so when it comes to leadership, I'm assuming that that is an essential part of leadership as well, that you are not necessarily telling everybody exactly what to do and giving them the exact steps that they need to do every single thing, every single time, but you're empowering them to, to think through the process and to, to be able to, to do things on their own. Is, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? I agree, Rob. Uh, when I would do a lot of leadership training, one of the first questions I would ask people is, how many of you like to be micromanaged? And through all the years that I have done leadership training, I haven't seen anybody ever raise their hand, Rob. Uh, nobody likes to have somebody looking over their shoulder telling them, no, you need to do it this way, not that way. Here are the steps I want you to do, one, two, three, in this exact order. But uh, people don't like that. Um, and there are very, very few uh, career choices and uh, very few uh, career paths where you have to do things in a very specific way. You don't have a whole lot of room, wiggle room there for doing things. Um, I'm thinking like chemists mixing things together need to be fairly precise. And the other thing that pops into my mind when I think about this is accounting, um, because when you start to get creative with accounting, it's not a good combination. Uh, you, you end up going someplace you really didn't want to go before. Uh, however, for the most part, there's a lot of different ways to, to get things done. And if you are handing over a project to somebody, uh, one of the best things you can do is ask them for their input and how they think it should be done because they could be very creative in this. They could come up with a more efficient way, a more effective way of doing things than you ever dreamed of. And you know what? That's what it's all about. When you empower people, that's one of the things that happens is you unleash that creativity and it gives them permission to do things in a better way. Okay, so you... There's two things I want to react to. And number one, when it comes to micromanagement, I I had a job, one of my first jobs, and it was it was doing service work. And we ended up they were remodeling our offices, so we moved into temporary offices. And my desk was literally directly outside of my supervisor's office. And as I would call people and I was talking to people on the phone from in her office she would be telling me what I would what I needed to say while I was on the phone and it just absolutely drove me bananas mm -hmm. um, but the other the second piece that I wanted to to pull out of what you said is that not everybody thinks like you no and Therefore, I would assume not everybody communicates like you and not everybody does things like you. And what you just said, though, is that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, no, it's a, a good thing. And I'm glad you brought that up, Rob. Um, for those of us who went to Sunday school when we were little, we might remember the golden rule, which is to, to treat people the way you want to be treated. Um, the, there, there might be one slight problem with that is not everybody's like you. Um, and and uh, Dr. Tony Alexandra wrote a book called The Platinum Rule. Mm. And the platinum rule tells us to treat others the way they want to be treated. And that's the key is to, to figure out how does this person want to be treated? And that's how I'm going to treat them. Also, how does this person want to be communicated with? What is their preferred style? How does this person want to be led? You know, not everybody's going to want the, the same thing. Whatever their style is, that's how I need to approach them. Not, and that's not necessarily going to be exactly the same as me. Interesting. It, it, it sounds like what you're talking about is creating a culture and not a, creating a set of actions, if that makes any sense, where you are... You're not saying 
this is what leaders do. They, they do X, Y, and Z as far as a list of, as far as a list of actions. You're saying this is the culture that leaders create, one that is, um, it fosters um, creativity, it recognizes people's differences, and it seeks to, um, it seeks to uh, meet people where they are and in the in the way that they need to be met. It, it does that make sense to you? It does. And when you do that, what it does is it literally your organization will start to flourish. Uh, one of one of the things that you need to look for when a when you're hiring people and b when you're bringing a team together is you want different types of people on those teams. Um, if everybody is going to think alike, you're not going to have a whole lot of creativity going on within a team. And when you are faced with a challenge, when you're faced with some type of obstacle that you're trying to overcome, the more creativity you have from that team, the better off you're going to be coming up with a solution to those challenges and to figuring out how, what to do with that obstacle. So the, the more differences you can have, the, the better off you're going to be creative creatively. Yeah. And I think you're so right in that, that we, sometimes we are looking for people who think exactly like us. And the reality is we need people who think differently than us um, so that we can broaden our own perspective. And even when it comes to, you know, to sales, there are different people, different ways that people do things. And the more different types of people you have in your sales force, um, the more variety there is in the way that they interact with customers and that some work better with certain customers than others. I, I want to go back to the introduction. Okay. And you, we mentioned the D I S C um, assessment tool. And so let's, if we don't mind, let's talk a little bit about some of the tools that are out there that can help facilitate communication and help, um, you know, improve leadership. So DISC is an assessment tool, and the, the D-I-S-C is an acronym for the four different styles that you have with DISC. Uh, it's fairly easy to understand because um, there's only four of them. Uh, and the reality is we are all a combination of all four. We all have a little bit of each of those in us, but we have a preferred style when it comes to how we communicate, how we lead. The D stands for being uh, driven, uh, being dominant. Uh, and these are people who are very outgoing and also very task oriented. They like to get things done. Uh, they are driven to get things done. That, that's their, their overriding force there. The I stands for influencers. They are also outgoing. However, they're more people focused. And they, they tend to inspire others. They tend to be very creative. Uh, they, they don't focus very much on, on details, but they want to get appreciated. They, they, they're the people who are the social butterflies who love to throw parties. Um, so, so you'll see them out and, and about there because they love to be the center of attention. S's are very sincere. They're very um, sympathetic. They're very steady. They are people focused, however, they're very reserved and they like to be behind the scenes. Um, they, they care for people. They, they want to make sure that the team as a whole gets along real well. They don't like a lot of change because they don't like conflict. So they, they tend to say yes to just about everything uh, to, to make sure they don't rock the boat. Um, but they are great team players and they are really the backbone of an organization. And then C's are the conscientious people. They, they are the compliant people. They are also reserved, but they are more task focused. And so these are gonna be people who are very detail oriented. They, they are focused on getting things done right. And they, 
they're the ones who are going to make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. And from those four different styles, you can you have very four different communication styles, four different leadership styles. And as I said, we all have a little bit of all four in each of us. It's just when push comes to shove, when you're under uh, some stress or, or under pressure, you're going to uh, go to one of those preferred styles. And that's how you figure out what your disc style is. Okay. And maybe this question is oversimplistic, but when you do that, I'm assuming that you do that analysis for both the leader and for the team members. Um, yes. Is it intended to, uh, is it intended to um, look at the composition of the team and whether or not the team is properly composed, or is it intended to look at the needs of the team and facilitating communication within the team? D does that make sense as a question? Yes, it does. Generally, people bring me in because there's some kind of conflict going on. There, there's something happening between the team themselves and within the organization where uh, things aren't getting done. And it's causing a lot of conflict. And generally, it goes back to communicating with each other and people not uh, getting the message across and not receiving it, uh, as we talked about earlier. And so what I will do is I'll, I'll do those assessments and figure out what, what are people's different styles. But what will happen is you'll get an overall view of the, the, the team or the organization, and you'll be able to see um, if you're actually missing some of those styles. Uh, a great example of that is I've worked with a manufacturing company and with their mid-level leaders uh, did this and what we found was there's absolutely no eyes in their group the eyes are the the influencers they're the inspirers they're the ones that are very creative when it comes to manufacturing you don't necessarily want to be creative in manufacturing you do need to be precise you do need to make sure that things are done in, in a specific way so there were a lot of c's but there weren't any eyes and what would happen is they'd come up to a challenge they'd have some type of problem that they would face and they weren't creative enough between their group to come up with new solutions they always wanted to do the same things over and over again and that was causing a lot of conflict among them god what well, you know it's funny you were talking about the c's as being the people that um get the i's dotted and the t's crossed um I don't know where I fall in the whole thing, but um, I tend to get my eyes crossed and my T's dotted, but which is a whole, a whole <laughs> different situation. Yes. Um, so, it the the using the disc assessment tool um, is that something that is is that a a paid tool? Is that a is there a free version? How does that work? There are free versions that you can find online. I've got the a paid assessment tool that I use. It's a, a bit more accurate. Uh, the free versions will generally tell you what your main preference is. Uh, the one that I have will we'll split it all up between all four of those. So that way you'll be able to see what you, who you really are. Um, and also the one that I have, uh, like I said, I can meld everything together. So that way you'll have an idea of what your entire group is like. The ones that you get for free online won't do that for you. Okay. Um, and maybe you can help me understand this as well. If just for, just for the sake of, um, argument. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I am a D and I have a team of IS and C's does, are you able to then say, this is how D's communicate with I's. This is how D's communicate with S's. This is how D's communicate with C's. Is that a possibility? Yes, it is, and, and vice versa. Um, Ds are very direct and to the point. Uh, Ds prefer to communicate by text and by email in short little bullet points because they, they, they need things done quickly. They want decisions made quickly. They just, they want to get things done. They literally have a list of things to do and they just need to check it off that they've done it. Uh, and when they're communicating with eyes who uh, much more the life of the party really don't care that you've got 
the, this list of things to do. They want to sit and chit chat for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And when you're, you're talking to the C's who are looking at them and saying, I need more information, I need more details. And then you're looking at the S's and the S's are just like, can't we just all get along? Uh, so yeah, there, there are different ways that you need to be able to communicate with those people on your team. And the better you are at communicating in their styles, the better off you're going to be getting what it is that you actually want from them. And they'll be more than happy to give you what you need when you give them what they need. Okay. And I just, I'm going to ask this because you brought up texting. I, um, to me, texting is both an extremely efficient and a, an extremely frustrating way to communicate. Can you talk about, are there any skills that you can help people with on how to better communicate through that medium? When it comes to text, the, the reason why text was invented was initially to send short messages to, to somebody. Running late, we'll be there in five minutes. Uh, what's for dinner? That, you know, that, that kind of thing where, or where you're asking yes or no questions. Um, to where it would be very easy to give somebody a short, quick answer, and then you move on. That's not what it's turned into. People have entire conversations now through through text. Uh, and it's getting harder and harder to tell through text because much like an email, you lose a lot of the context of what it is that you're trying to, to get across. Humor doesn't come across very well in a text unless you're using a whole bunch of emojis. Uh, you, you don't have a whole lot of, like I said, context when it comes to how it is that, that you want this to actually sound. You literally only have the words. And so when you're using text, keep in mind who it is that you're texting to and what type of person they are. Because if they are somebody who wants to have a long conversation and wants to, to really flesh things out, a text isn't going to do you a whole lot of good other than to say, when are you available for a phone call? Um, so that, that's the thing to keep in mind with text is if you have somebody who needs a lot of detail or wants to go further into a topic, a text isn't going to do you a whole lot of good with them. Got it. Hey, Michelle, you have shared a, a lot of good information today. If people are looking to find out more about you, how can they do that? What's the easiest way? The easiest way is to go to my website, and that is ateagofyourown.com. You can go on there. You, my contact information is all on there. I've got several different programs that I offer on there. Um, there's actually a gift page if they, they'd like. Um, and I have a disc profile cards on there where it talks about the four different styles and how to communicate with all four of those different styles. So people are more than welcome to go to ateagofyourown.com and download that. Wonderful. And I will put a link to uh, your website in the show notes so that people can get there as easily as possible. Uh, Michelle right. Teague, you have been wonderful. I appreciate this. It is now time for three questions to establish your humanity. Are you ready for these, my friend? I am. Uh, do you believe in second chances? Oh, yes, definitely. If it weren't for second chances, uh, most of us, uh, most of us wouldn't be successful. I, well said. I, what is at least one thing that is on your bucket list? Ooh, I'm somebody who likes to travel. So there are several continents and countries that are on my bucket list. And one of them is Australia. I, any, any particular draw to Australia? I, I, I always thought koalas were cute. And then I found out they're not so cute. They're kind of ferocious, but I, I'd like to meet them face to face anyway. There you go. So here's your random fact from Australia. Australia has two animals on their flag. They have an emu and a kangaroo, which mm. have one 
a one piece in common. Neither one can walk backwards. It is a country that's all about moving forward. And that's, that's awesome. just kind of a, a fun and cool thing. Uh, awesome. All right. Last question for you is the Pittsburgh salad. Okay. For people who are not from Pittsburgh, you don't understand this, but in Pittsburgh, if you get a chicken salad, it is, you've got the salad base with your lettuce and, and that is standard. And you've got, you know, onions and cucumbers and tomatoes. But then on top of that, there is a layer of cheese. And on top of that is a layer of French fries. And on top of that, then you would have your grilled chicken. Uh, are you a fan of the Pittsburgh salad? Or uh, do you feel like it, it's a it's a Pittsburgh thing, but it's okay without? Love it. When we moved here from Tallahassee, Florida, and the first time I had fries on a salad, I thought, this is my place. I, I, I am in the right place here. So, yeah, um, I'm one of those carb addicts. And let me tell you, if you put fries on anything, I'll eat it. Excellent. So for anyone who is not from Pittsburgh, when you come to Pittsburgh, there are two things that you should be aware of. Number one, the Pittsburgh salad in which you get all of that on it. Or there's also the Pittsburgh sandwich. And the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh sandwich, uh, which is... Uh, by brand known as Permanti Brothers, um, mm -hmm. is it's you've got your two pieces of Italian bread, and in there there's your meat, there's your cheese, and then on top of that is coleslaw, and on top of that are your French fries, and it's all together in one package. You would almost get the impression that um, here in Pittsburgh, we believe that anything would be better if you just put French fries on it, and I can't say that that's way wrong, right? No, uh, definitely fries and the cheese. Uh, you got to remember the cheese. Uh, both of them make things better. The only thing that makes it even better is bacon. The, could not agree more. It, yeah. Michelle Teague, thank you so much for being here. You are a, indeed in a Teague of your own. Um, I, for all of my listeners, thank you for being here. I, listen, here's something. Do me a favor. Um, go to iTunes and just leave us a review. I would love to hear what you think about the podcast. Getting those, getting that feedback is phenomenal. And listen, I would love for other people to hear what you're thinking about the podcast as well. I will remind you that when you stop learning, you stop living. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.